liminal space, a term many of you are familiar with. I don't know about y'all, but images like this provide me with a strange sense of reprieve and childlike wonder. These glasses make me look like I kiss women for a living. I don't kiss anyone for a living, that's the point. A desire to lose my identity in mere concept. What makes liminal spaces liminal spaces is supposedly the innate humanity to them. In the mere fact that most of these images display something only a human could make. Yet, somehow, it lacks human touch. It is void of people as if it's more of a poor imitation of a human space rather than truly intended for people. Even liminal spaces that are often just images of fields and hills. The grass is meticulously cut and the hills are round and bulbous, very clearly shaped by human hands, not those of Mother Nature's. For most, liminal spaces give a sense of uncanny valley. An almost human but not quite feeling. Foreboding, a trickle of sweet dread tickling the back of your throat. So lightly, you might just miss it. So why have so many Gen Zs become so enamored by these images and this concept of the in-between? Weirdcore and Dreamcore are two aesthetics that commonly use liminal space as the basis of their aesthetic. You'll often see art, videos, and edits like we're about to look at now. Read deeper into this community, you start seeing characters and images like this. Now, tell me what the trend is here. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out mm, its eyes. I think there are many reasons why so many of us associate eyes with liminal spaces. A place meant for many eyes in the way of people is void of them. So it's reasonable why we feel like we're being watched in these spaces. Therefore, we associate them with the very thing that, well, watches. Another aspect is the seraphim and cherubim. Many call these biblically accurate angels, but they were actually never talked about in the Bible, at least not their appearance. They were vaguely talked about in the book of Enoch in terms of appearance, of which the book of Enoch is not canonically normally in most translations of the Bible nowadays. These angels are more talked about in ancient Judaistic myths and a just general Abrahamic mythos. These angels' likeness is commonly seen in weird core and dream core aesthetics, and I think it's due to they mimic an aspect of how liminal spaces make people feel. These beings are innately incomprehensible. They'll never be understood or fit completely into the solidity of the human mind, but you could still perceive a part of the overarching concept that they are meant to be. A being of 500 golden rings, thousands of wings, and millions of eyes there is a part of them that is somewhat recognizable. But when you focus too hard on it, it slips through your fingers like water. Similar to a liminal space, 
you know, you can understand parts of it. You see a chair, you see a wall, you see a beam, you see a balloon. All things that you know. But when you put them all together in this liminal space, something is just off. Why do they make you feel the way that they do? Why is the room empty? Why does it look like that? It leaves you with this soft primordial dread. One not quite loud or overbearing, mind you, but a dread that is placid. Still water oftentimes looks and feels very tranquil, but foreboding. The nature of stagnant water lays beyond our naked eye. In reality, it is the most dangerous form of water. Humans have made it this far because we categorize everything we perceive. We build endless context upon each situation and noun. And when that noun doesn't fit the situation or vice versa, something just feels off. The back rooms is what popularized the concept of liminal spaces within our modern culture in the online space. The concept of the back rooms originated from a post made on 4chan's Urban Legends board. This photo was attached. In, in the post, it details this idea of if you stand in just the right place in reality, you can no clip through and find yourself here. Originally, this was the only back room. Feverishly yellow walls and the scent of mildew permeating each corner. No monsters, just this for thousands of miles. The original horror factor was isolation. No monsters, merely the dread of being alone, yet not knowing if you were truly alone. As more and more people saw the post and got attached to the concept, the concept of the back rooms expanded. It lost a part of its mystique, but kept the horror factor. It ended up getting its own wiki, I think, where people write different levels of the back rooms and whatnot. Personally, my favorite level is the one where there's like a Hello Kitty room and there's like this creepy guy that you have to give like cute shit to and he'll let you stay there for a while. The way I'd... <laughs> Him is insane. Anyway, at this point sadly, the concept of the back rooms has been specified and categorized to death like a baby SCP wiki. I'm personally not a fan of the Backrooms wiki, and I don't really like how the concept was handled because I think it kind of completely ruins what it was originally about. What made the original concept of the Backrooms interesting is that no one could truly understand it. It existed outside of human comprehension. It was limitless in the mere fact of its utter removal from sensibility. As specific monsters are added and levels and certain paths from room, like one back room to another back room, it just became another run of the mill horror concept. Yeah, if I saw this thing running at me at the end of a hole, yeah, I'd be scared, duh. Who wouldn't? I've seen this same concept used 10 million times in every horror movie, horror game, and analog like ugh. Being left in utter isolation to lose my own identity as it merges with the warped environment around me. Until one day, my own name becomes foreign to my tongue, and I see more humanity in the statue frozen in time than in flesh and bone to become utterly stagnant, like a forgotten water basin. Paranasi. Paranasi was a book published in 2020 by Susanna Clark. This book is probably my favorite book I've ever read. I read it about three years ago, so some of the details won't be perfect. The setting of Paranasi takes place in this place void of human life. Grand marble halls stretched out for as far as the eye can see. Ornate statues looming across these forgotten corridors. No grassy fields to nap in or hills to look out at. Merely cold stone and a mysterious sea that crashes against the marble figures carved by hands long since abandoned by conscious thought. You follow along the daily life of a man who wanders these halls. Where he is from, what he is, are answerless questions. In concept, he has spent years here, maybe even decades, but what is a year without a son? A strange man visits twice a week to compare research, he says. But as to what they are researching has long since lost meaning to Paranesi. 
Paranese? Is that my name? Or is that the name of the Fawn statue in the West Hall? I don't remember. I won't spoil the book because the book is absolutely amazing, but it takes place in a very interesting environment that is a liminal space. It really is a compelling read as you slowly discover what the Paranese's house is. So please read it. But the book was heavily inspired by Giovanni Paranese's work. He was an artist from the 1700s. His work consisted mostly of buildings, but what made it unique was the nonsensical structures, the stairs to nowhere, and the beautifully detailed statues in odd places. These depictions felt regal, yet empty, like a shell, unformed and squishy, like a corpse rotting from the inside. Humans have long since felt this uncanniness when it came to liminal spaces. It beckons forth our curious minds, the call of the void. This concept isn't restricted to just physical places. This feeling ascends past the concrete. It's something I marry into my own art and writing quite a lot. Contradiction, incomprehensibility. It isn't the beauty of the unknown, but the beauty of the unfathomable. Pressus, the herald of the Dreadfather. A compassionate individual, gentle as a ray of sun filtering through snowy branches. Yet, in the same breath, she would take the head from the necks of the innocent, on mere whim alone. Death is no punishment in the eyes of a being who fears not the void. It is not courage, but rather acceptance, understanding. Death cradles the weary to sleep. It is no mercy, it is a right, the right to die. She stands on the precipice of despair and hope, yet neither are distinct in her eyes. One does not come without the other. Who is she to deny fate its order? Pressus is a juxtaposition. Her personality, actions, mannerisms, and reasonings are innately inhuman, compassionate yet violent. Humans have short lives. They value their time greatly and fear death implicitly. That fear is irrational to the likes of her. So, she leaves most with a sense of uncanniness. How is her compassion genuine if her blade is so sharp and well used? Humans forget they are just as contradicting in their affection as she, yet blinded by the need for categorization. To be is to be unfathomable. Fear not what was never ours to dictate. She says with that token tender smile of hers, a face as kind as hers could make anyone's heart melt. Or perhaps it was just him, he hoped. The ray of light filtering through the branches, illuminating his blood-soaked linens. How come, in a time so permeated with dread and depravity, something as simple as soft light weaving through snow-burdened trees to caress my aching bones could be this beautiful? If you like that style of art and writing, it is from my comic Usurper Prince. It isn't written or drawn yet, it's still in the writing process. <laughs> but I really want to publish it one day, and I've been working on it for the past year or so. And I really want it to be like my magnum opus, so like I'm putting everything into making this perfect rather than just rushing in and creating it. So if you want to join me on my journey of creating Usurper Prints, you can join my Patreon where I will post updates about Usurper Prints fairly regularly, as well as there's a 20% off discount for anyone who joins my Patreon for my Etsy shop that has a bunch of shirt designs. But if that doesn't interest you, you can join the Discord if you feel like it. But that's all I have today, folks. You got work tomorrow, or school, or raving about how you have a hard-on for abstract theological philosophy. But as always, don't dream about wheat-based byproducts.